Hello, this is R.J. Deacon reading the Supreme Court of the United States Opinion Syllabus in Peter v. Nanquest, certiori to the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit, argued October 7, 2019, decided December 11, 2019. The Patent Act provides two mutually exclusive methods for challenging an adverse decision by the Patent and Trademark Office, PTO. A dissatisfied applicant may appeal directly to the Federal Circuit, that's 35 U.S.C. Section 141, or, as relevant here, may file a new civil action against the PTO director in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia, Section 145. Under this second proceeding, the applicant must pay all the expenses of the proceedings. Respondent Nantquest filed a Section 145 civil action after its patent application was denied. The District Court granted summary judgment to the PTO and the Federal Circuit affirmed. The PTO moved for reimbursement of expenses, including the pro rata salaries of PTO attorneys and a paralegal who worked on the case. The District Court denied the motion, concluding that the statutory language referencing expenses was not sufficient to rebut the American rule presumption that parties are responsible for their own attorney's fees. The in-bank Federal Circuit affirmed. The Supreme Court held Decision below is affirmed. Justice Sotomayor delivered the opinion of a unanimous court. The PTO cannot recover the salaries of its legal personnel under Section 145. The American rule, the bedrock principle that each litigant pays his own attorney's fees, win or lose, unless a statute or contract provides otherwise, see Hart v. Reliance Standard Life Insurance, provides the starting point for assessing whether Section 145 authorizes payments of the PTO's legal fees. Contrary to the government's view, this court has never suggested that any statute is exempt from the presumption against fee shifting or limited its American rule inquiries to prevailing party statutes. Rather, it has developed a line of precedence addressing statutory deviations from the American rule that do not limit attorney's fees awards to prevailing parties. The presumption against fee shifting is particularly important here because reading Section 145 to permit an unsuccessful government agency to recover attorney's fees from a prevailing party would be a radical departure from longstanding fee shifting principles adhered to in a wide range of contexts. See uh, Rickle House v. Sierra Club. Section 145's plain text does not overcome the American rule's presumption against fee shifting. Definitions of expenses, while capacious enough to include attorney's fees, provide scant guidance. The mere failure to foreclose a fee award neither specifically, specifically nor explicitly authorizes the court to shift fees. See Baker Botts v. Asarco. Um, the complete phrase, expenses of the proceedings, would not have been commonly understood to include attorney's fees at the time Section 145 was enacted. Finally, the modifier all does not transform expenses to reach an outlay it would not otherwise include. In common statutory usage, the term expenses alone has never been considered to authorize an award of attorney's fees with sufficient clarity to overcome the American rule presumption. The appearance of expenses and attorney's fees together across various statutes indicates that Congress understands the terms to be distinct and not inclusive of each other. See, for example, 11 U.S.C. Section 363N. Other statutes that refer to attorney's fees as a subset of expenses show only that expenses can include attorney's fees when so defined. See uh, 28 U.S.C. Section 361. Nor do this court's cases further the government's position that the court has used expenses to mean attorney's fees. See Taniguchi versus Can Pacific Sapan. The Patent Act's history reinforces that Congress did not intend to shift attorney's fees in Section 145 actions. There is no evidence that the original patent office ever paid its personnel from sums collected from adverse parties. Neither has the PTO, until this litigation, sought its attorney's fees under Section 145. 
when Congress intended to provide for attorney's fees in the Patent Act, it has stated so explicitly. The decision below is affirmed. Justice Sotomayor delivered the opinion for a unanimous court. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to get a hold of us, we can be reached at rhodesscholar80 at gmail.com. That's R-O-A-D-S and 8-0. Or on Twitter at Court Syllabus.